Hello, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Saga Jakubczyk, and you are listening to the DME Interns Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the DME Interns Podcast. I'm your host, Saga Jakubczyk, today joined by Wendy Falk. In today's podcast, we aim to highlight her experiences being what is known as a special projects intern here with the State Department. Very good to have you on, Wendy. Thank you. It's great to be here. So let's get started with the basics. You know, I've had all kinds of interns on the podcast, and generally, they all tend to stick to one specific department, you know, editing, writing, etc. However, as a special projects intern, you're a bit different, right? Yes. Yes, um, I do. I've done some editing jobs, some um, where I'm just merely shrinking down the content to fit different formats, like say Instagram, for ex example. And I also do some research and writing longer articles that go in more in depth than some of the shorter articles do. There's also a song project that we work with called Operation Song, but um, I haven't got to work on that yet, but I do look forward to that. Ooh, Operation Song. So we've got kind of like a little plug for the future going there. Yeah. And you mentioned Instagram. What exactly does that look like? It's hard to picture the State Department utilizing something as, you'll forgive the term, hip as Instagram. We're very <laughs> serious here. Yes. Um, yeah, There's a. they have a, a channel on Instagram where they will post uh, various um, various posts about the internship or possibly about veterans and there's also a Instagram, Facebook and um, it has slipped my mind the other one Twitter, I feel like Twitter do we Twitter. use Twitter? Yes, yes oh my gosh yes <laughs> yeah, so, and, and there's a Reddit channel so there's a lot of different places and uh, LinkedIn. So there's a lot of different places to find out about not only in the internship, but also the work the inter internship does and maybe read about some of our veterans of our country. That's right. In your email to me, you mentioned that your department also writes articles for what are considered to be notable veterans. Uh, what in your mind makes a notable veteran? Um, so these would be veterans that um, have done significant things through the military that maybe other people have already heard of. The, there's another program that we do, the, the Veteran of the Day. I assist with that sometimes. And those are articles written about any veteran who was dishonorably is, discharged. So people can um, ask us to write about their family members or friends. And so we get the opportunity to honor any veteran, no matter what their position was in the military. Interesting. So anyone at all can ask, even outside of the internship? Yes. Yep. The public sends us requests sometimes, and there's a form online on, uh, I don't remember the exact website, but under the Veteran of the Day program online, there's a form to nominate a veteran. Hmm. Interesting. So listeners, make a note. <laughs> but aside from veterans, you also mentioned you're currently focusing on something called America 250. Could you explain a bit more about that? Yeah, the portion of America 250 that we work on is writing up stories or short articles about veterans. Uh, the, the whole project is a, a project that is leading up to our 250th anniversary of our country. And it does entail some other aspects besides just the write-ups about veterans, but we're not involved with anything besides the writing up the veteran um, articles. Oh, I see. It's one of those things where every department brings their own dish to the table. If you yes, ex yes, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. See, when I saw that America 250, you know, anniversary, I was just thinking, Oh my gosh, you know, break out the uh, tricolor jello, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, being an intern who jumps around a lot, interacting with other departments, things like that, is there one department that you find resonates with you in particular that maybe you might pursue um, in the future? 
Well, I do like to write and I've been thinking that I would like to be a writer of some sort with the government as a career. I am also finding that I'm enjoying editing more than I realized I would. So I think there's, I don't have it completely narrowed down, but I think I would enjoy anything in the field of writing. I see. Yeah, we've had writing interns on the podcast before, actually. And a lot of them are very, very fond of the writing department. It's super popular within the DME. Yeah, I think it's, I like uh, the aspect of having the opportunity to honor our veterans because so many people have sacrificed so much for so many, and it's nice to be able to give something back. That's true. And that kind of addresses my next question to you, which was, in what ways does your role here with the DME allow you to improve the lives of others? And what you just said sort of plays into that. You know, you get to expose people to all of these veterans who have contributed so much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Also, I, I like that um, with our program, having people from all across the country and even, even Americans who are living in other parts of the world, we get to communicate with people who are in various situations and cultures, and we get to help each other learn about just the way different people interact, and we can help each other improve our skills as far as uh, maybe writing or editing or researching or even just online communication. And so that's another thing I like about the program that we, that is an aspect where we get to help others. That's true. And speaking to interns about skills and soft skills in particular, I found that leadership skills are often what is most mentioned. So I was wondering, how often do you find yourself acting as a leader within your role here at the DME? I think that I, um, I tend to, in life, take on leadership roles. If I see something that needs to be done, I take care of it or find the person who should if there's somebody who should already be taking care of it. And um, I just naturally do that. I've actually had people reach out to me saying, hey, I want to work in this other department. And I put them in contact with the department heads. So I, I think something about me comes across online sometimes as, as um, maybe being approachable, which I like because I like to get to help people. Um, but I do like that we, uh, I think naturally when we're talking to other, other interns and helping them improve skills, that in itself is kind of a leadership position. And so it helps build those skills where we're helping somebody else increase their own skills and ability to do their job better and communicate better and build those people up. And so it's just a natural way to build up our leadership skills. And I like that. Oh, of course. And in what ways would you say, have you helped the other departments? Um, I know I hate to put you on the spot like that. If someone <laughs> asked me that question, I would be like, oh man, I think I sent an email once. <laughs> I have found, if I've found conflicting information as far as our training materials go, I've sent that, taken screenshots and sent that to the right department so they can correct the errors or if something's missing or incomplete, I've sent that information along. And um, when I've seen, like the, in, the, um, in the internship, in our Slack communication, they'll mention, hey, we need some help in a particular department. And... So I will go and volunteer to help out in that department. If I don't have all of the training through the program yet, we do have online um, boot camp training courses. So I can go online and take the training for that particular department or the, the particular position so that I have the skills necessary to just jump in and help where it's needed. I see. And now this kind of makes me curious. How did you first come across this internship? Well, I was actually looking on the USA Jobs website, um, looking at different positions available in my area and noticed there were internships on there. So I looked into the internships and this internship appealed to me because of the, mostly because of the writing aspect, because I do like to write. And when I saw that they were writing about veterans, that of course just was it for me. It's like, this is exactly what I want to do because I, I've wanted to help honor veterans for years and it's just a natural, easy way to do it for more people than just those people in my area. Exactly. And now 
this kind of leads me into the big curveball job interview question. So <laughs> what are your careers going, what are your career goals, I should say, going forward? I mean, certainly writing, learning, helping others to learn, as you put it earlier, they're very needed skills out in the workforce. So it seems like you have a pretty wide reach with what you're able to do. Yeah, I've, I, I don't have it narrowed down a whole lot. I would like to work. I know I'd like to work in a government position. There are a lot of government jobs near me. I, I live near a few different bases. And in fact, about 30% of the jobs near me are actually government positions. Um, so I know there's a wide variety of options. I'm studying communications and that could help me get a job with um, journalism or writing in various degrees for the government. I know there's a lot of jobs for um, writing manuals and just communication in general. Hmm, very true. I think communication is a skill that um, it's, it's underestimated, but even when we were talking just earlier about the ways in which you help other departments, sending an email within the State Department is not an easy thing. You know, we use Slack, we use professional and personal email. You know, as you've said, we've got Reddit, we've got Instagram. Just reaching out to someone is tough because we're on different time zones, things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, I can absolutely see that. And one third of the jobs near you are government positions. Is that right? Yeah, almost. Yep. Oh my yeah, God, what a statistic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, wow, I heard that and I immediately thought DC, but the more I think about it, there's quite a few places that are like this. Yeah, I think there are. I was looking at some statistics recently and my state is uh, 11th in the country for the percentage of jobs that are um, government jobs. And so I'm thinking there must be several other areas that have even a higher percentage than where I live. Wow, that's that, that's pretty nuts. I mean, I have to say where I'm at in uh, in Wisconsin, <laughs> there's um we're seeing a bit of a lack. Not gonna lie, but <laughs> you seem to have perfectly lucked out. And Wendy, now before I cap off this podcast interview. I'd just like to give you a tiny little question to summarize your experience for our listeners. Uh, what has your time interning with the DME taught you so far? I don't know. Uh, let's see. I think the internship has helped me improve my, my writing and research and edu um, editing skills, of course, and online communication. And those are great skills for anybody since we're online so often everybody has to write these days um that is very true yeah and i like that uh the as, as there's an assistance with our uh, we can get assistance with our own resumes and linkedin accounts and i like getting the input from other government employees that can help us um, look if we're looking to get a job with the government, they can help us actually understand that process better. That's true. That's what's wonderful about working with the State Department. You're able to help others and you actually receive a bit of career help in return. Yeah, exactly. And now I believe that is where we must cap things off. Wendy, thank you so much for joining me here today on the DME Interns Podcast. It's been great. Yeah, thank you very much. Of course. And now I would like to thank our listeners for tuning in. Do not forget to subscribe. And if you could give us a five star rating, we would really appreciate it. For more information about joining the DME interns team, please visit DMEinterns.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Once again, I'm Saga Jakubczyk, and you're listening to the DME interns podcast. Stay tuned for next week's interview.